Okay, this uh, video is not really much of a repair video. It's I don't imagine there's going to be too many people that run a clock across a clock like this, this movement. This is a uh, Hershady uh, two-weight chime movement that uh, I'm going to show in this one. All it needed was one large bushing put in it. Uh, and it just basically needed a lot of cleaning and uh, so what I'm going to do is just show basically how this movement goes together or how it came apart and what it looks like and how it operates uh, very unusual uh, movement made in uh, 1914 and uh, involves kind of a very unique and uh, Pretty innovative kind of a kind of a movement to control, so uh, we'll take a look at it. All right, this uh, next repair, our latest repair, is going to be on very old, unusual movement, manufactured in 1914. It uh, strikes the chimes on uh, five tubes. The unusual part of this is, though it's a Westminster chime and then it strikes the hour, you'd normally think of uh, this having three weights, but this one uses just two weights. One weight that runs the time side and one much heavier weight that runs both the chime and the strike. And to do that it's got to have a very unusual, more complex mechanism in it. And having not worked on any like this before, I'm going to have to study this one, take lots of pictures before I take it apart, and understand how it operates. And then we are going to uh, make the repairs necessary to get it, uh, get it running. I've already determined what the big problem is here. Here's one of the uh, arbors for the uh, first wheel and you can see the bushing around it we go over to the other one and immediately see that the bushing for this particular wheel has simply fallen out and it's gone so when we get this apart we're going to have to replace make and replace the uh, the bushing for this wheel so that's uh, that seems to be the major problem. Oh, this has been rebushed through the years, probably several times. Uh, but as I look at it and I've checked out the pivots and pivot holes on this one, there doesn't seem to really be any appreciable with any real wear on the pivots. So we'll go from there. We're going to start by. Uh, Probably remove this rack that holds the uh, that holds the tubes, and then we will attack this uh, little by little as we learn a little bit more about it. Okay, we remove that rack. A little cumbersome to try to video it. It just was uh, held on with four wood screws, and uh, now I'm going to take the bottom plate off and see what we got. Or the uh, board, shoulder board, take that off, see what we got. Cables are held on, it's just a blob of solder through little holes, a uh, blob of solder, this one is actually stuck in the hole, but that's, uh, I'm just going to cut those. Uh, the owners asked that uh, we put new cables on it, so we'll be ordering new New brass cables anyway, so it doesn't matter if we cut that off. And just so we get it out of the way, so it's not in the way, we're going to get the uh, the uh, crutch, the anchor, and the anchor bridge. I'm going to take that off, get it out of the way. That's held on with two screws. I've got it off, and looking at the 
anchor. Good quality hard steel, I guess, because there's no evidence of any wear that I can see. And uh, that's a good thing. Okay, I'm going to start by taking this whole drum assembly off the top in one piece. That will disconnect this angled and uh, beveled gear. This looks like uh, uh, four, six, seven, eight, seven or eight screws that have to come off. So we'll take those off and get that drum off the top. Okay, I had to take off the uh, reset lever and uh, the chime shut off lever before I could get to these two screws to get this completely loosened and uh, now this should come off okay and there we go okay, set that aside you an idea what's left in here. There's really not that many gears. Now we're going to take this cock off and uh, so we can remove the motion works. And here might have been an issue when this was last worked on. There's an arrow on that gear there and an arrow on this one here. And they are supposed to line up as part of the timing, my timing mechanism. They're supposed to be put on back on. And those are meshed. Those two gears are supposed to <clears throat> have those arrows lining up. And they are not. And that might have created one of the problems with the way this was maybe or maybe not working. So when this was put back together the last time, it should have been put back together. Like that. And now we're going to take off this bridge that holds the uh, center wheel in. Yet another iteration of this uh, particular oddball movement as described in the other literature that I've found and in, including uh, uh, including Stephen Conover's book on uh, Hershey, Hershey's uh, tubular chime uh, those sources, other sources, describe this minute wheel and the four lifts that are on it for the quarter hours is having one of the pins closer to the center than the other three and that being the pin for the hour but this uh, I just measured these, these each of these pins is uh, exactly the same distance from the edge of the wheel as the others so there's no variation there there's got to be another way in here that it keeps track of uh, which pin is the hour? All right, now we're going to uh, remove the spring that pushes the uh, drum over by removing this particular cock right here. That will take the spring off with the cock included. And then we will remove this cock. Uh, here, get this gear out. Next, we'll remove the cock that holds the, the governor in. Remove it. Removing that allows us to take the fly out with the plates not separate, so we know that when we put this back together, we don't have to have that fly in place. We can replace it after everything else is put in. Alright. There's a cock here for the drive for the the roller or the uh, drum. 
that can be removed as well. It goes in the inside of the plate. The screw is over here. It also should be noticed that noted that this cock that holds this beveled gear uh, is going to need to be reinstalled. It's going to have to be reinstalled before we put the plates back together. Or there's not going to be a way to to put that screw in. So we need to remember to get that in when we reassemble this. That this has to be installed before the plates go back together. So on the strike side, we have the uh, main wheel. We have the second wheel. The third third wheel is back here, and then the fourth wheel has four pins on it that serve as warning pins. So. Uh, That's all there is to it, just one, two, three, four gears, and then the fly goes in, or the governor. And then on the uh, run side, we've got the main wheel, and that's where the major problem is with this, is that uh, the bushing is completely missing. That's the major problem. And this is the, uh, this particular little lever is what's called maintaining power. Keeps power on the, uh, temporarily onto the uh, wheel as you're winding it. But, uh, so what we need to do is we need to get these plates apart. And then we need to uh, get a bushing in that thing. And we get the front plate off now and there's our layout there's the back plate inside unbelievable yeah. whoever worked on this last or at some time in the past may not have been the last one even with a Hershey's movement look at that can you believe that? Pound the daylights out of it to tighten something up. Give me a break. Numbers on this one are uh, 743 is the serial number on this. And when you look that up, that equates to 1914. Well, there we are. It's a front plate, the bottom of the front plate. There's uh, two main holes. Notice that this one is the biggest. Then this one. Then this one. This is the shortest. Inside of the front plate. Notice where that is going. Okay, there's the... Uh, new bushing put in on the run side that was missing and now we're putting it back together here are the gears put in place next step is to get the uh, top put back on with the chime roller on it. There's the strike side. We can run smoothly. Here's the, uh, I'm sorry, that's the run side. Here's the strike side over here. This will be the piece that runs the roller. Find some directions on the end here on how to uh, set the timing on it. It says mesh, cannon pinion, and a minute wheel as marked. Those are the two wheels with the arrows on them. And then up here it says bring dashes on hour and chime track in line. And when those mesh uh, 
and then mesh the hour wheel so that both hands point at 12. There you see a line there, and then this will have to be turned. This is what it's talking about. There's the other line. Okay, those lines have to be lined up. Then do years on the front of the clock dial have to be lined up and then we set everything to 12 o'clock. Okay, we're going to take a look at the essentials of how this works. Um, there is no rack, there's no snail, there's only two weights that control both the time and the strike and uh, chime. And this roller, first of all, is controlled, its rotation is controlled on this side by this gear that's part of the strike mechanism or chime mechanism. And on this side, this particular gear here is controlled by a beveled gear from the run side. Um, the pins that are on here, all of these pins, this one, this one, row, this row, and this row, control the chiming. Each uh, note uh, of the Westminster chime. And then this row of pins controls the strike. And if you look right now, the hammer for the strike side does not line up with the pins. If I were to rotate this, those pins would not hit that. All right, the way this is controlled is that this barrel, a roller, can be shifted back and forth. And that's done with, uh, there's a spring on this end that is pushing on it. And what controls when it will be shifted there's a little pin right there that rides on the surface of this piece of metal right here, circular piece of metal. And you'll see that there is a slot right there. When this circulates around one full turn, which constitutes all of the bars of the Westminster chime. It takes exactly one hour for this to make one complete rotation while the pin is on that surface. At the end, at the hour, that pin will come around. Let me get a pointer here. Pin will come around and it will fall into that slot, dropping down to a lower level on the inside. Uh, on that inside level there is another slot which is right now lined up with this slot on the outside. But after an hour this will progress, this slot on the inside, this, this slot will stay, the, stay in the same position because this piece is immovable. But the slot that is lined up with this one right now in an hour will be one twelfth of the way, will be advanced one twelfth of the way because of this gear that is actuated by the run side of the of the movement. At that point, once it's finished chiming, it will drop into that lower slot 
or their lower level, which will allow this barrel to shift to the left and line up the pins here with the hammer that's going to strike the hours. Now, how many of those it strikes is dependent upon where that inside slot is as it advances. Because once that pin, that pin, here, falls into that inner slot, it then drops to a third level. And that shuts off by allowing this, to, this uh, cylinder to move even further to the left will allow these pins to move beyond this hammer and that will keep the, the hammer from striking any more uh, strikes of the hour. So if that slot has moved one twelfth of the way in, then this will strike one pin before it fall that before this pin falls into the inner slot, drops into the lower level. The hammer will now be riding out here where it can no longer be be raised by the these pins, and this will continue to rotate a complete rotation uh, until this piece comes around, lifts this lever, and shuts, uh, shuts off the, the whole mechanism. Okay, then after the hour, what happens is that uh, there is a gear down here that has a pin on it that will push on this lever, which will push the roller to the, le to the right, allowing this pin to come back to its present position. So this is the start position of everything at exactly midnight. All right. So when we get to the quarter hour, here's the sequence of events that's going to take place. There's going to be a pin, as in other clocks, or actually four pins on the minute hand or the uh, cannon pinion that has uh, four pins that will raise this lever every 15 minutes. Now inside through that slot is a gear with an additional four pins on it, one for each quarter hour. This will raise, this outer lever will raise the inner lever and release a pin so that the mechanism can start rotating or almost start rotating. At the same time this is being lifted to release a pin, here's an, there is an extension on this outer lever that acts as a warning stop, moves up at this exactly the same time and catches that pin to keep it from rotating. All right. Once this drops off of the pin on the on the cannon pinion, then this will drop out of the way, and the the chime will commence. Now, what keeps this from falling back into place is this little stepped lever. Uh, when this has been lifted, let me see if I can get that to move out of the way. Okay, when this has been lifted here by the cannon pinion, that little stepped lever moves up and holds this and keeps that from falling down and shutting the mechanism off until it's released. Well, the thing that releases it is this lever right here. And there's another set of pins. Here's a pin that will lift it at the end of the hour, but there are the end of the three quarter hours. There is a pin 
that is currently in place right here that's going to lift this to shut off the chime after the first quarter hour. So we're now in a position to have this strike. So we're going to go down here uh, get to the quarter hour. Okay, This lever has now dropped off out of the way so that we can now have the chime run. I'm going to operate that by hand. Okay, And it will run until that pin that is under that lever lifts that which lifts this lever here enough for this to drop out of the uh, drop off so this can then drop down and shut the mechanism off so let's take a look at that okay now we're striking And that pin right there just lifted this, which lifted this off of that stepped lever, allowing this to drop in place in front of a pin on the, between the plates. All right, so now it has now struck the first quarter hour. All right, notice that during that time that this pin has moved part way around the surface of the stationary piece here. And in fact, if we looked inside as time goes running, this inner slot is going to move forward enough that uh, when we get to the hour it's going to strike only one. All right, so now we're ready go to the half hour. Again we're going to go through the same procedure. We'll lift this enough that that stepped lever gets in the way. Okay. It trips. Now it's ready to strike the half hour. And we allow this to strike the half hour. And again, another pin has been spaced appropriately that allows all eight notes to play on the half hour. And then this comes into play, lifts this, trips everything, and it shuts back off. Right now we go to the three quarter hour, and the same thing's going to happen. We're getting this set. Now it's going to get ready to stri chime. i got to reach over here and move it by hand. Okay. Okay, that strikes off to three-quarter. Now something a little different is going to happen on the hour. It's going to strike, instead of there being a pin here, there's going to be a, a relatively large mechanism that will end up shutting this off. Because we not only have to run the chime, but we have to strike the hour. And here we see these pins are still not going to line up to move the hour hammer. And we can see that during this time that we've gone that we've gone three quarters of an hour that this line that used to be lined up here has now moved that far which means that inside that inner slot has moved enough that that pin will not be able to fall down far enough to uh, it will fall down far enough that it will only allow for one pin to stay in a way and, and, and cause a strike until this roller is again shifted to the left 
and this hammer moves on this side of the pins and can no longer strike. So we're going to see it strike one time. I'm going to come up, reset it. Okay, now it's ready to, to chime. So I'll watch the chime. And it's going to strike all, all four bars now. We're going to watch that pin come around. Oh, we won't see that pin come around. But we're going to hear it fall into place. There comes the pin. When it gets up here, it's going to fall through that slot onto the second level. Drops in. Okay, now, when it dropped into that slot and dropped into a lower level, that allowed that roller to move over just enough that now the pins are lined up with a hammer for the, the uh, strike. And so now it is ready to strike. Notice that this is not, it's got no pins that are going to catch it. Uh, this thing, that piece, has to go all the way around to uh, catch that and shut everything off. Um, interesting to note that no matter how much, how many times this strikes, this, during the strike phase, when it's striking the hours, this barrel, this roller will make one complete rotation. So if it strikes at one o'clock, this will continue to rotate as if it were striking 12 out of 12, but it won't sound 12 because this hammer will be moved over and not impinge upon the pins. So we're going to go ahead and watch it strike now. There's one and now the pin in here has fallen onto a lower level shifted this barrel over just enough that the pins no longer line up with a hammer and now it will continue to run doing absolutely nothing no more striking no chiming none of the pins and the roller are lined up with hammers so it will continue to rotate to the end of the end of the sequence. I'll tell you when that's going to be here in a minute. Got to go through as if it were striking midnight, but it is only struck once. Now there's a lever coming up here. The end of the cycle. This is the one that's going to lift this lever. It's going to lift that step pin. It's going to allow that lever to drop in front of the stop. And now we're stopped. Okay, now the next most important thing that's going to happen is that this whole thing has to be reset. And to reset it, we've got to move this barrel, or this roller, with the pins on it, all the way back to the right, such that the hammer for striking is on the inside of the pins, practically up against that gear. And uh, that happens between the hour position and the quarter hour position. And that's caused by this little gear down here has a pin on it. And you'll see what it does. That pin is going to start pushing that lever. And it's pushing the roller back to the left, allowing this pin, which is, is, is uh, on a pivoting lever with a spring on it, pushes it back out to the outer surface and we're now getting ready to be in a position to strike the quarter hour again. So there's the, you see where the pins are now in relation to the strike hammer. Strike hammer is on the inside of the pins and we have
pins lined up with hammers now to start chiming again. So as I move to the quarter hour again, okay, okay, now it's ready to strike. Now you watch that pin move away. Another pin lifts that lever and shuts things off. We go to the half hour. And notice, go to the half hour. And right, now we're going to do the same thing. All the chiming is going to take place for the whole hour on the outer surface of this piece right here. Okay, there's our half hour. Notice at the same time, I'm going to progress the time now to the three-quarter hour. Notice that that gear there is moving. And that is, uh, and that gear moving, that is moving the inside slot on that second lo lower level, lever, level a little bit further ahead. So that the that pin that rides within that mechanism will have a little further to travel before it falls into the lowest level, allowing this roller to shift completely to the left and moving the pins out of the way of the strike hammer. So we're going to go ahead and let this strike the three-quarter hour. Now watch. as we continue here. Okay. Now here's where we'll we'll see. Okay, now it's going to strike the four bars of the Westminster chime. That pin in here is going to move around and fall into that slot which will allow this roller to shift to the left a little bit to line up the hammer with the pins and then it will strike until the pin inside here falls into the inner slot drops into the lowest level level allowing this roller to shift completely to the left and moving the pins to the left of the strike hammer so here we go. Watch, see if we can watch this happen. Okay, we're striking the f all four bars. And you see that pin coming around there. And when it falls into that slot, you're going to see this shift so that it can strike. There's that shift. Now it should strike two, I think. One, two, be more of a shift now. It's shifted just slightly enough for the hammer to move out of the way of the pins. And now it will continue to rotate without any sounds being made. But you'll <laughs> it will run until that little lever there gets up here and shuts things off. And that will put the pin in there back to the beginning, but still deep within the slot. Okay, now it's shut off. All right, now we're going to go between the hour and the quarter hour again. And you see that being pushed over, the pin pop up. It over, it moves it more than enough until the pin can ride on that surface and then it lets it go okay and we are now ready again we have that all set just about there we go that's set and now this is in a position with pins lined up on the hammers here to chime but these pins not lined up to strike. Get to the quarter hour. Uh, 
Okay. And that's how it progresses. So, uh, to go out and figure all this out because in researching this particular movement, um, I had Conover's book on chime clock repair and uh, the version or the edition that I have doesn't really have anything to say about the two weight movement that this is. But, and I copied a, a PDF file from the archives of the NAWCC National Association of Watch and Clock Collectors, of which I'm a member. And it's from the Bulletin, from October 1996. And it is entitled, The Oddball Hershady Tubular Bell Clock. And uh, it's a two-weight. And in their description, this is by... Uh, Stephen H. Rogers, obviously New Jersey, and in reading this, his description uh, goes on to, with two differences uh, from what this movement is. The first difference being that the cannon pinion uh, gear that has the four pins for each quarter hour he describes the movement that he's looking at as having the four pins equidistant from the, save one, uh, equidistant from the center or from the edge, that uh, one of the pins in his movement is closer to the center than the other three, and that being the one that uh, initiates the hour strike. So it, it operates differently from this mechanism. The other difference was in the description of this part of the mechanism here. The interior description is described as having a, a surface that is spirally shaped. And this pin rides in that spiral groove and moves closer and closer to the center, dropping into a hole then that allows the shifting for the initiation of the strike mechanism. I don't exactly, and I've read his over and over, and without messing around with it, it's still kind of hard to uh, visualize what's going on at times. But this one differs, this uh, two-weight movement uh, differs from his description in that this mechanism does not have a spiral groove. Instead it has three separate layers or heights of layers. It has this outer rim on which the uh, on which that pin rides during the chime mechanism. Then it drops down into onto a surface that 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 also allows the roller to be shifted to the left and allows it to strike. And that second le uh, uh, layer or level has a movable hole or slot that's controlled by this gear that moves forward with each progressing hour and allows the roller to strike the proper number of hours before falling in a hole, dropping to a lower level that then shifts this roller so that the uh, hour hammer is on the outside of the, the pins. Uh, pretty complicated little thing. Uh, very ingenious, but uh, took me a heck of a, a while to figure out exactly what everything was doing. And uh, I don't know if that makes any sense at all, but uh, that's what I got from it. The, this is called the hour track that rotates inside. This mechanism is called the ch chime track. 
called a chime track because that's where that pin rides around during the chiming sequence. It uh, that pin rotates then once every hour, and then this thing uh, rotates once every 12 hours. So that's the differences in that mechanism. I hope that uh, makes sense.